Hello, this is Mr. Abbott again. We are on Learning Guide 6 now in Pre-Calculus 11. So this is still with quadratics and topic 1 is we're going to complete the square. So completing the square is really, really important uh, when you want to graph. So if you want to graph a function, um, there's two forms. There's the standard form, the vertex form is at the bottom here. And that's easy for us to graph because we have the vertex, we plot the vertex and then we can go from there. Okay, how we complete the square? Okay, it's just a, sort of like a recipe, you follow the steps. All right, so I'll just go along. So the first thing is you group the x's because they have something in common. You put them in a house, and then you kick this guy outside. All right, because it doesn't have an x attached to it. Now, the next step is you're going to look at that middle term, or we call the linear term, this guy right here, 6, and you take half of 6. So you're thinking, when I set it up, this is what I do. I go x squared plus 6x bracket bracket. I put a little squiggle here and a little squiggle there, and then the 5 gets kicked out. That's my method for setting up. Um, now I take half of this guy, which is 3, and I write it right below, and then I square it, complete the square. And then 3 squared is you add a 9 there, and you subtract a 9 there. Now, some people say, why is that? Well, you are really adding a 9 in here. And the reason you're adding this 9 in there is you want this to be what we call a perfect trinomial. So if I add this 9 there to make it what I want it, I have to add 9 to this side. And if I add 9 to that side, I just bring it over and so it becomes minus. So I just I skip a step. Now what you're going to do is put a bracket. That's why I do that. Bring that sign down and just an X there, bracket. And then you group those two together. And voila, you have your completed square. All right, so you can take a few minutes and you can pause and try these ones. And I'll just put the answers up and you can check. So these two terms make positive 4. And you can always double check your answer because if you go to your Desmos on your, on your phone, you can type this one in and this one in. And if they overlap each other, you know they're identical. All right, B I'm going to go through because it's a little trickier. And the reason it's trickier is because it's got a 3 in the front. So this just makes it a little trickier to complete the square. All right, so the same thing. You're going to group these guys together. All right, but now you can't take half of 12 because of this guy. All right, so you've got to be aware that before you take half of this guy, you got to get this factored out. So you take the 3 out. And then when you take the 3 out, you're dividing that out. Now what I always do, because I factor that out, I always put a square bracket there, square bracket there. Because 
these are all going to be affected by that 3. So the minus 9 can stay outside the bracket. Now I can take half. So half of 4 is 2, and you square it, so it's plus 4 minus 4. All right, so you can close the bracket there, take that minus sign, drop it, take just the 1x, and put the 3 now. Now to get rid of the green bracket, I got to take this 3 and multiply it by that guy to get rid of the green bracket, because this one has one bracket. So that gets me negative 12 minus 9. So these come together to form your Q. Minus, oops, I'll just do red here. Minus 21. And I'm using Y. You can use F of X. It's the same thing. All right. Now, most often when you get into higher math, you don't really complete the square all that much. If you want to find the vertex, we use this, uh, oops, we use uh, this formula right here. X equals minus B over 2A. All right, so I'll show you this method because it's way slicker. So the first thing is you write your A, you write your B, and then you're gonna plug them in and then you get this, and then you reduce it to that, and that's your P, <laughs> quick. And then to get the Q, you take this guy and you substitute it into those X's, right? To get your Y, and this Y becomes your Q, and there's your answer. Now, don't forget about your A. Remember, this is your A. And the formula is A bracket X minus P squared plus Q. So don't forget that A, because the A is right off the bat. You got it right on the beginning. All right, so pause, and you can try this guy down here. So the P is negative 9 over 2, or you can say negative 4.5. And to get the Y, you're going to plug this guy into there and there. And I put it into my calculator, and I got 73.75, or the fraction, if you want to do it in fraction form, is that. And now I can put it into the form. Don't forget the A. I'll do it in fraction form. And don't forget, opposite, remember, opposite, because it's going into the bracket. All right. All right, example four now, we're going to look at modeling real life functions using quadratics. Okay, so this example, I'll just go through with you. So last year, the photo sessions were $10 and 400 sessions were booked. It is estimated that for every $1 increase in price, 20 fewer sessions will be booked. So if you're running a business, sometimes increasing the price will give you more revenue with fewer sessions. And you always want to find that really vertex or the maximum value. So we call that, you know, maximizing your profits. So the first thing you always want to do is declare some variables. Okay. So in my example, I just called N the number of price increases. And I said R is the revenue. 
because we're trying to generate some revenue. All right. So we set that up. Now it's quite easy. I always think that the first one, I always think about money. So it's $10 and then you're increasing by $1 for every um, price increase. And the next one is talking about the sessions. So they stay together, the sessions. So we have 400 sessions and there's 20 fewer. So make sure you have a minus 20 there. Then I, all I did is I write a formula is R, which is revenue, equals the price times the number of sessions. That's how you generate revenue. It's just like if you're selling hot dogs. If you charge $5 a hot dog and you sold 10 hot dogs, you're making $50. That's your revenue. So we write these two guys out in our brackets and then we foil it out and we get that answer. Okay. Now we can complete the square, but I would choose not to. I would use this much easier. But you're going to get the same vertex. Okay, so we get five and so what that says is our graph is looking like this. This is our revenue. This is our increases in price. And right at that point is your vertex. That's when you're maximizing. So we are increasing by $1. And there's five price increases. So that gives us $5. But remember, we're selling them for $10 at the beginning. So that's $15. So you want to set your price for $15 for those photo sessions, and then you will maximize your revenue and make $4,500. Okay, continuing on, you can always check your answers by doing Desmos. So you plug the function into your calculator and you find that vertex. Okay, these steps are for the graphing calculator. And it's the TI 83. All right, but I would just use Desmos, it's much easier. So you can try this one and see how you do, and I'll go through the answer here. So there's the first thing you gotta do the variables. All right, so what do we have here? So we have $8 and we're increasing $2 plus 2N. And the other one is the number of bottles. So we have 100 bottles and there are five fewer. Okay, and then we put that into brackets so we can foil out. And then when we foil it all out, there's our revenue. So I'm just going to skip to the answer. You guys know how to foil. So there is your revenue formula. So there's the first part. And then you can go to your Desmos and type it in, or you can use X equals minus um, B over 2A, and then you'll get a vertex of 8. Okay. Now, watch out, because it's going to ask you to find the selling price. The selling price is not 8. That's just the number of increases. So we have to go 8 times 2, because it says for every 2 increases, so that's 16. And then we add it to the original price, which is 8, so you get $24. So that's what you want to price your 